I'm Tyson at Adventure Rig, and behind me we have the Adventure Rig. Now this video here is a review of the installation of a Planar diesel-fired heater. This is the 8DM-12. And we also have a few other videos posted, one being a time-lapse of the entire installation process, along with a review of the actual heater and what we think of it and how it works. And then also a video of the heater running so you can hear how loud it is in the compartment along with how loud the exhaust and intake are. So to start things off, we're going to move over here to the compartment where the heater is actually mounted and go through that entire process. So this is where I have the heater actually mounted. This is in the generator compartment. And the reason I chose this area was because I didn't have a whole lot of choices. I either could mount it here or somewhere in the very back of the trailer in the garage. But the reason I chose this was because I have a bed directly above me and that's where I want to run the heater ducting because that's what's most important to me to keep warm is the bedroom. So the heater that I've got here is mounted on six inch C-channel plate. I've got two of those and they're bolted into the bottom of the heater and then they're bolted directly through the floor. Now, you also have an exhaust and an intake running through the floor that you have to cut holes for. And what I did next was ran my power wire right here. This runs through the floor, and then it runs for about 35 feet all the way to the back of the trailer where the batteries are located. I had to add a little bit of wiring with that. It came with about 20 feet, so I'd add about 15 feet. Then I also ran a thermostat wire from the heater right here and it runs along the wall in here all the way through and then straight up through the floor into the bedroom. And on that, unfortunately, they only give about six feet of wire and I needed to add about another six feet to make the entire thing work. I also mounted my fuel pump right here behind this wall and with that, they give you about 15 feet of wiring, and I only needed about three inches. So what I ended up doing was cutting both ends of it, cutting the ends off the wiring, and then splicing it all together, and then hooking it directly into the heater right there. Now one thing to mention with the fuel pump, ideal situation is having it run vertical. You also want it running below your fuel tank right here if at all possible. The heater also needs to be mounted horizontally, so you can't have it on an incline or vertical or anything like that. Now another thing to mention with the heater is that the intake, which is on the back of the heater, now not the intake for the engine compartment or engine component of the heater, but the intake that is actually pushing the air through the heater and into the living quarters, that needs to have a couple inches between it and any kind of a surface. So I've got the wall back here, so I've got about a three inch gap between those two surfaces, just so it allows enough air to come through. Now the ducting that I used is an insulated ducting. It's six inch out of the heater, and then it runs into a Y, and the Y has two four inches coming off of it. And from there, one goes into the bathroom, and then the other one goes into the bedroom. Now this has a value of R6 for the insulation, and then you can see that it's got this nice barrier on the outside here, which helps to keep things really cool. That's another thing to mention, this heater gets extremely hot. It could melt a plastic bag that's next to or sitting on the vent. That's how hot this thing gets. On that note, the heater itself down here also gets extremely hot. So what I did with the wiring is that I actually just taped it right to the exterior of my insulated ducting just to help prevent anything from getting too hot and melting anything. Now you can also see that I have my fuel tank mounted right here. This comes with the unit. And the reason I chose that location, one, you don't want it inside of the same compartment that your heater's in. So I put it out here, plus it's a little easier to fill out here. I didn't have a whole lot of options on where to mount that. But what I like is that I've got this exact space on this side right here. So if I find that this, it's about a two gallon or 1.8 gallon tank. If I find that that's not enough or if I'm boondocking and I don't have time to go and get fuel or I can't carry enough with me, what I could do is buy another one of these tanks and mount it on this side and then run a hose through and tee it in prior to the fuel pump. 
and then I'd have double the fuel capacity. So that's kind of why I chose that location. Then from there, I've got the fuel hose with a hole going through the wall here, and it ties directly into my fuel pump. That again is mounted right here. Then that fuel pump just runs straight into the heater. Now, if I go and open up this door here, you can see exactly how I have the ducting run into and through different walls and floors to get to the end result. You can see the generator located right here. I've got one piece of ducting running directly above it, right out of my Y. And then on the back side of the Y, I have a ducting going straight back through that wall and right into the bathroom. So if we dip underneath the front here, you can see exactly where I have the intake and exhaust hoses running. So from underneath the trailer here, you can see exactly where I have my exhaust and my intake running. Now one thing on the intake, it needs to stay clear of debris, snow, ice, that kind of stuff. So with mine, I ended up mounting it behind this front jack and behind this cross member here, kind of tucking it up out of the way to prevent snow buildup on it. Now with the exhaust, this guy gets extremely hot. So you have to have a place that you can run it without melting anything or catching anything on fire. It gets so hot that I decided to wrap it with an automotive header wrap. And what this does is it's gonna keep the heat down on the entire pipe. I've got this plastic holding tank right here. I definitely didn't wanna melt that. Now prior to wrapping it with this, through the wood floor here, I actually had the wood start to blacken on me because it was getting so hot up there. So definitely a good idea maybe to wrap it with something to help keep that heat down. Now if we go inside, I can show you exactly where the ducting is run to the vents. So we're in the bathroom here, and this is where I mounted the first vent for the heater. Now this is just a classic four inch by 10 inch vent, and I cut it right into the step. Directly on the back side of this wall is the generator compartment. So it doesn't have to run more than about four or five feet to get to this point here. And there's enough power behind it that it'll blow through this opening and into the kitchen and living area. Now if we go up these stairs here and into the first closet, you can see where I have the other ducting running. This is the first cabinet that I have the ducting running in and it comes right up through the floor here where the generator is directly below it into this box through the wall and into the next cabinet where we have the vent. Now also right in the corner here is the wiring that comes directly again through the floor and this is the wiring for the thermostat. I have it running into the wall here through the wall and onto the other side where the thermostat is located. So this is where I've mounted the thermostat. Like I said, the wiring just runs right through the wall. And then behind this cabinet door, we've got that box. And behind that is where the ductings run and right into this vent here. Definitely enough heat to keep this entire room extremely warm. Like I said, these do get very, very hot. So definitely keep in mind where you're putting them, not too close to anything that can melt or again, catch fire. That concludes our installation review video, again, of the Planar diesel heater. It's the 8DM-12. Now, if you have any questions about your own installation or anything about the heater, feel free to send us an email. It's adventurerig at gmail.com. Now, also, like I said earlier, we have a lot of other videos posted on this particular heater and a lot of other videos posted in general. So if you're curious about any of them, definitely browse around and take a look through them. Again, I'm Tyson at Adventure Rig.